I grew up in Bangladesh, in the remote part of this globe. Growing up in, in that area, watching the night sky with my dad as a child, I was fascinated by the majestic beauty of the night sky and the mysterious stories hidden there. I didn't know anything about physics or science or even the flying meteor flying, flying across the empty void of the upper space. But I knew about the night sky. As my father pointed out, the stars, the stories that I was surrounded with, I saw them mirrored in those blobs up in the sky, like the Northern Star, the Big Deeper, the Milky Way. I saw faces. I saw faces, alien faces, very strange looking faces staring at us from those blocks above. And as you can see, yes? <laughs> can you see the faces? It's an Im these are imaginary faces in an imaginary galaxy cluster. And then I moved to New York. And I had the opportunity to watch the lunar eclipse, the blood moon. Oh, I cannot read it. Oh my God. Oh, I have to. So this is <clears throat> how I feel about the beauty of science. Even with the cloudy sky, I got a glimpse of the blood moon. My past, present, future, dancing in the rainbow eyes, rode across the unbridled city sky in search of the blood moon. I got a glimpse from the 13th floor on the one September night. I looked for the old lady weaving the blanket of love for the coming winter. Her dormant beauty mired in the red halo disappeared in the mystery land for another 18 years. As you know about Blood Moon, it happened in 2015, so we will not going to see that any until 2020. 20, so just add up, <laughs> it's 18 years from 2015. <laughs> and you can see if I go back, how do you go back? Backspace. I don't see the backspace. Did it? Oh, thank you. And you can see that, hello, that's what I was referring to. Now the disclosure. <laughs> The flare of science stepping early into the childhood, in, into the impression mind of my childhood, left a lasting desire to relate the innate and destructive beauty I felt about science through my unruly paintbrush and poetic verses. And hopefully you will bear with me with all my <laughs> effort. <laughs> as I mentioned, and as Sherry mentioned, science tells stories, the mystery stories. What are those mystery stories? And don't you love stories, mysteries? So can my painters tell those stories to you and share them with you? And let's see. So we'll follow the detective named Science. As I said, Science tell, tell mystery stories. Science uncover mysteries, so it's the detective. And watch the beautiful mysteries it uncovers. The mystery of seeing colors. Let's start with that. Don't, don't pay attention to the clues given there, the wavy forms, the colors, the numerals. Our detective will find out and let us know what those clues are for. But let's leave on <coughs> what we're seeing here. So I see a lot of colors here. Red, purple, blue, Pink. So we humans really love colors. But do you know what color is? Why do you see colors? What is the mystery behind? So let's find out. Let's saw, see what the RTV riddle has to tell us. Warming up in the arms of the lover RGB, 
the color joins does the demi moving her red, green, and blue toes. Munching on popcorns and peanuts, I take pride knowing the RGB secret displayed on the shiny TV screen. Hiding its mysterious origin, the color joins the splendor of RGB in my tiny art studio. The paintbrush captures the glamour on a piece of white canvas, not knowing what color it is. Meanwhile, the Frenchman de Broglie plays the web matter temple on his magic wand. Um, if you want to talk about de Broglie, I can talk about afterward the presentation. So, suddenly, my cerebral brain which is the only God I know of, spills out the iconic secret. Color is nothing but a fantasy of our mind. Unbeknown to me, the invisible waves metamorphose into a spectacular dialect of colors when they hit the neurons in my cerebrum. Oh, what a relief. The God of mine plans on everything for me so that I can survive in this hostile world. So you see the invisible, those waveforms? If I want to talk to you, if I want to relate to you, if I use those invisible <laughs> frequencies or waveform, I cannot talk to you. I cannot survive in this physical world. So the brain, my intelligent brain, my God, transforms that, metamorphoses those wave frequencies into or light or the visible light into light and into colors. And that's like hard color, red, is really a frequency or a wavelength. But my brain, brain makes me so that I can tell her, oh, wonderful color you're wearing, but if it's invisible frequency, how am I going to relate to it? Now let's Go to the mysterious universe and explore more of the mysteries. The colliding black holes, far, far away, about a million light years away, is when they collide, they wrap the invisible space time. And what comes out of it? A wonderful thing. Gravity, the wave, the love. It's not about me you or anybody else. It's not even about us, it's the pencil. I found in a trash can lying in the embrace of this smelly garage, staring at me with pleading eyes, not knowing where to go or how to go to show these cars to move with their nuclear steps to rise above the sun. To bring back the wave on its tip, that is long lost in the passionate love of the mysterious black holes million light years away. Casual between two long fingers, the carbon emblem jots down the numbers, marking the presence of the invisible dance in the reflecting mirrors as the world around us <laughs> as the world around us swirls in pleasure. So you see, now, finally, we have found the steps uh, of uh, invisible gravity waves in the mirror at Lego. Hurrah! So science is beautiful. The last tang of the cosmic dust, and there is a face there, that means my childhood Stories never left me. I still see faces in those cosmic particles. And yeah, it's a metaphor. Why I'm calling it last tango? It's not really, but it's fun to imagine that way. That is the last tango of the cosmic dust. And after all, what they are? They're our friends. Iron, carbon, oxygen, and many other particles heavier than hydrogen and helium. And they at the end of their dancing, when they get their tigers embraced and create what? Us, the planets, the North Star, which, then, which the sailors navigate to go through our open oceans. So that's how I feel about the 
outer space, the particles that floating around in that misty space. And it came when I was a child. That impressionable mind that I carried with me from my childhood. Now let's go and talk about the stories of brilliant minds, those unforgotten unfor those forgotten women scientists. We know about Mary Curie, we know about others, but let's find out the, how brilliant those mindsets are, were, and are still are, and still will be. But before I do that, let's talk about women. Our journey began long, long time ago, way before the story of Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve was invented. We were the gatherers. We gathered food for our children and community. We built an intimate relationship with the ecosystem. And guess what? We were the first botanist in our species, not men, women. But we, what happened afterwards? Patriarchy prevailed, took away our rights, our brains. And that's why we see, you will see that even the pioneering works done by all these brilliant minds of women, they were not given recognitions. It's their male counterpart who got the recognitions. So let's find out. This is double helix. Most of you are Darwinist, I'm assuming. So everybody is familiar with it. So I don't even have to explain what a double helix is. But who is she? Who is Rosalind? Who did the invention? Who, sitting in the lab, even before <laughs> Crick and Watson hypothesized, it was Rosalind bombarding the cells, the living cells, with X-ray beams. And you can see a glimpse of the diffraction, X-ray diffraction of that <laughs> DNA structure. So she was the one who really uncovered the structure of DNA, but who got the Nobel Prize? Watson, Cree. Rosalind was ignored. See, our brains are not recognized in today's world. To our means by our women. And then, yeah, Noether. If you are familiar with Noether, he she was a mathematician. And other theorems. She did the symmetry theory, where from which comes the conservation laws. Energy cannot be destroyed or created, it's conserved. So it's from Nether's. And guess what? Nether solved the last puzzle in Einstein's gravitational theory. Einstein would have been, would not been, have been here without Nether's symmetry principles. She was also the <coughs> She also pioneered the abstract algebra, but she was mostly unpaid, ironically. And she was considered inferior to men. Her brain was not comparable to men. What a sad story. But our journey has not ended yet. I meant we women, we continue our journey for our rights, for our brains, for our future, for our bodies. Miriam, and I'm using first name instead of two names. Miriam Mirzakhani, even though she's an Iranian American, and you can see the many folds, the space floating around her in that picture. She pioneered the differential geometry and the Riemannian space. And she was the only Fields Medal winner in mathematics. She's the only female. What happened to other mathematical brains that women have? How come they were not recognized? But at least she was recognized for her outstanding work in differential geometry. Oh, I see some people are actively looking at their cell phones. Are you? Okay, Wi-Fi, CDMA. <laughs> Who did that? Who came up with that idea? Who 
is that woman? Did anybody recognize? Did anybody recognize her? I did put the names, so, you know, but do you know who she is? And she came up with this CDMA, code division multiplexing X, code multiplex axis. Why? So that the German could not decipher the messages that have been exchanged between the friendly nations. It's all jumbled up, and you can see all this jumbling up in her face and everywhere. How smart she was. And she was also a very famous Hollywood movie actress. So women can do wonders in many different disciplines, including science. But do we know about her? No. We know about Wi-Fi. We know about Steve Jobs. We know about others, but not those women who were the pioneers with their brilliant minds creating the whole space for us. CSO, the Chinese Madame Curie, she, sitting in her lab, showed the left right, the left hand doesn't work the same way as the right hand. They are not symmetrical. Not in the real, in the physical world, like in a macro world, but in the microscopic world, in the quantum world, in the weak interactions. And you can see the wonderful Feynman is going around, decaying into, from neutron to proton to uh, electrons and electron neutrinos, as she discovered and uncovered that parity is not conserved, is violated. But did she get anything for it? No. It's Young and Lee who got the Nobel Prize. But there, there was this hypothesis who proved that it's a theory. Who gave the evidence? It was C.S. Lewis sitting, meti doing meticulously her lab work in the, at Columbia University. So these are the stories of brilliant minds, of women, of the pioneers who, whom we should be proud of, and whom we also acknowledge the beauty they bring to science and to our lives. So let's go to the mysteries of evolution and biology. And I want to give <laughs> a tribute as a physicist to biological world, because biology is wonder, wonderful and mysterious to me. I don't quite understand it, and that's why I'm t talking about it. A life tribute in a double helix. I offer you a cup of quanta Bowing my head down, I do not fathom you. You traverse the dancing mystery of the double helix, deciphering the pieces of your life, engraving four simple letters, A, T, C, and G. I set aside the universe I live in, letting it to sleep in its expansion when the fleeting black holes gobble up the galaxies nearby. Cosmos is Aurelius, you agree. Oblivious, you exist. Nor does it care that it holds your microcosm in the fold of primordial space time. The quantum entanglement is a remote world. If you know, the Chinese did discover that there are interactions through, they did it from ground stations to, the, to their satellite, that there is a remote interactions between uh, particles. And that's quantum entanglement. Maybe even meaningless in the context of our living. You go on continuing to evolve in the embrace of the genome and epigenome, creating wonders, ignoring the strings, many dimensions, and the graviton, if it ever found. We found the gravity wave, but not the graviton, the particle, which is associated with gravity wave. Spinning your heart out, you make love, to thrive in your tiny space, unaware of the charm, symmetry, and color of your quaternion existence. I'm mixing physics and also biology. With your multifaceted multi mitochondria, you build up the strength and the evolutionary history in solid footsteps. I salute you. You notice the dream presented to you. Relishing its hot aroma, you slowly take a sip. For all the words which are not 
which, which you are not familiar with, please visit my blog site. I gave explanations and also the physics or the biological biology behind those, biological science behind those. This is another mystery, the color mystery, seen this year. I'm not going to give the poetry here because of shortage of time, but you can see when some people hear music, different tones in music, that's also frequency, and they see colors. So our brain, our intelligent brain, and the neurons, and the synapses, work so complex, complex way to make us see colors in the tones of music. The quantum illusion. We hear about all these quantum mechanics and people get puzzled, uncertainty principle, double slit, web particle duality. So let's find out a little bit about it. A sonata, deep wrongly when sleeping. I slept, I have slept through the night dreamless to become a moth for the monarch butterfly, to fly me away on his wings to the land of no return. The silent whisper of the three degrees Kelvin spread across my universe, rise the verses in an uncertain tone as Heisenberg stays away in my sleep. The folk tale carrying the mysterious fairy to make her lyre played on the harmonies of the singing waves, casuals me with a magic wand while dipping it into the soul of Deep Rodley. I cross the slip to go over to the other side, not knowing what my destination holds. The sea of life on a piece of human-made story takes me into his arms. I don't have time to talk about double slit or wave particle duality, but if you visit my site, you'll see all the explanations behind all these terminologies and also all these concepts that have been expressed in my poetry. I'm also showing some pictures, but not the poetry behind it, because of shortage of time. When you observe, as an observer, something, we change the behavior of that observable entity. And that was another quantum illusion. The puzzled observer, here is wave, there is particle, it's the same thing of the same entity. How can it happen? So this is another that as we observe, we change the behavioral pattern. So I was just giving, uh, capturing that changes. But I'm not, uh, uh, if you go to my site, you'll see the poetry. I also like to use science and social issues together, blend them together as an allegory. My daughter, her name is Aurora. It's a tribute to my daughter and to all the diaspora daughters here in Silicon Valley and across the United States and in New York City. Cosmic rays from outer space pulsate brilliantly in bold colors in the world of ions. The audacious plasma dancing across the sky portrays the gutsy aspirations of our rainbow daughters. The defined electrons in dazzling movements create the spectacular aurora bringing the radiant voice of our diaspora children to the big city. Are we all colored? The voice of colored people. I didn't know I was colored when I left Africa. I carried the mitochondria from my mother's womb as my destiny when I put the first footstep into a distant land. Coasted along the ocean line, searching for food, I left my roots everywhere. I clothed my skin in many colors as I made my voyage under the scorching sun in the tropics to the land of no sun in North Pole. I blanketed my body with mutated genes, moving from icy cold winters to blazing hot summers. I was the human mother, father, child, daughter, and son, when I made my journey across. Afterwards, as you took me into your own, I became colored with many different names. While my throbbing blood flowed into the river, red. 
This painting is also here, but this is, I call it hybrid digital. I, I have the tendency to take my traditional artwork and also my mixed media artwork, this is a mixed media artwork, and make it into hybridized with digitized, digital. So it has two stories here. The wall we built to get rid of the shadows of the immigrants, incarcerating them as they move across the fields of America, separating their children from them, throwing them out, and we build the walls. So you can see, it's an abstract art, but you can see the shadows of the immigrants and the walls. But it's also Higgs field. The splendor of physics is also here. The W bosons, which are interact, which are carried between the weak particles, not weak particles, in the weak interactions, they were massless before Higgs came along before, right after the Big Bang, with the Higgs field, they acquired mass. They were massless before, they, so they gained importance. So you see the allegory or the metaphor. So that's what I want to show this painting, that it's, it has dual meanings in, the, in our science world as well as in our social world, <laughs> what's happening today. The heart art is global and what we really real? Let's find out. The other day I was watching a previous show on what they are showing in China, in Guangdong province, up in the mountains, the farmers are pollinating each plum tree individually and was showing their frustration. What's wrong with that picture? The bees were disappearing. And then the modern butterflies, which used to fly to here from Mexico, are getting less and less so. What happened to the ecosystems? Why are, we, are they disappearing? What is causing their ecosystems to make them disappear? Do we ever question? So the question comes back to, is global warming real? And then we shed tears, and more tears will come as we lose our lives, our loving ones' lives, as well as all our life belongings in the devastating fires here in California and other places in the world. And it's still happening. I was in San Francisco the other day. I can still see the smoke all over the sky. And I also found out today in New York the smoke from California fire has gone there as well. So, tell me, is global warming real? So let's look at the flood. What happened to New York with Hurricane Sandy? I was there. Large part of New York was submerged. And then, if I go to Pakistan, in the Indus River, which never flooded before, now it's flooding killing thousands of people and their livelihoods. In Bangladesh, the Jumuna River. So let's read a little bit from there. It's my writing though. Art was flat, very flat, like a stretched piece of shimmering muslin cloth. She took a deep breath before started praying. The yellow river was angry in its fury. The furious river stormed the flat out with a Thunders rose, crushing everything on its way. The carcass of human and animal bodies floated everywhere on the capricious, muddy flood water. She looked around for her loved ones. The dinghy was small. There was no lawnmower as far as she could see. The scorching sun above simmered with pain. The torn red sari barely covered her dark body. She let out a heart-wrenching cry. Nobody heard her. Nobody was there around. It was the vengeance befallen from the sky. God was not merciful. The massive dawn power and the flood threw away, away everything. Her tiny tin shack, the ceramic container filled with rice, the man 
plan for life, everything, it was Armageddon. Everybody was punished. She was also punished for the shame, for the sin she didn't know she committed. She cried out loud, I stop here. My pen falters, cannot listen to the heartbreaking cry reverberating across the vast expanse of the muddy water. A huge wave capsized the tiny boat, taking the poor woman along with it. The earth stood silent. Is global warming real? So this is my allegory here, the last human boy with the memory of the green planet. So you can see the mother is scheduling the last human boy, protecting it. So from the destructions that we are causing in our ecosystems. So let's move on to other science mixes. I was in Colorado Spring the other day. The wonders in the cave, the beautiful structures, what are they? There's the stalagmites. I haven't had the chance, I painted it, but I haven't had the chance to express my awe I felt when I saw those. So maybe one of these days I'll do that. But please visit if you want to know more about all these stuff in other, um, like um, NASA site or other USGS sites to see how wonderful the art is, how wonderful the nature is, and how wonderful the science is when it ex discovers the mysteries of those. This is a funny story. I had a neighbor, a very God-fearing neighbor, from the south. She was really into God and religion. And then History Channel changed her completely. History Channel on the TV told that there are aliens on the other side of the moon who came here and created us. So the creator, her creator is now the aliens on the other side of the moon. And there is also an Indian folklore there is a lady on the moon. When you see that structure on the moon, that's the lady who is weaving our clothes, spinning the charka. That's an Indian uh, instrument to weave clothes. So we humans, when you look at science, when you look at nature, we also build our own stories. That's how the fairies came about. That's how the other <laughs> Beautiful stuff came about, but there is science to it also. So let's quote uh, an event from the New York City. The pedestrian is an he met or she met um, Dr. Higgs. It's an honor to meet you, Dr. Higgs. Why? You are the reason I exist. What? Oh, without you, I would have been nothing. Oh, that doesn't make sense. But you created the God particle. Nonsense. See, here is the beautiful Higgs, but not the physicist Higgs, the particle Higgs, emerging from sun. Finally, in 2015, we did find out that God particle, the Higgs boson, which gives mass, to the W boson, and that's how all of us finally got our mass. Not directly, but through all these particles acquiring masses. And you can see the beautiful picture at CERN, where it's my imagination though. It may be completely different when you, when you do the diagrams, but it's the Higgs. The solar eclipse. I had the opportunity to watch the solar eclipse and had the opportunity to see the black hole with its event horizon through a pinhole. No, I could not have seen it otherwise. Because in reality, I cannot even approach the black hole. Because I, first of all, I cannot violate the speed of light. But as I gain speed of light, I become heavy. And I become infinitely, so I cannot even go there. But the solar eclipse last year 
and, and as you can see, this is what I saw, the black hole with the event horizon, give me the impression. And one of the reviewers said, your artwork shows that your imagination lets you experience many things that others cannot. Thanks for sharing that. And thank you. This is all I have to say. And if you want to know more about science, arts, and storytelling, please visit my site. And if you like what you see, then please tell others, because I feel very strongly about science and the beauty of science. And it's not a monster, as Sherry mentioned. There is a very artistic beauty in science. And it is my hope by sharing the, through my arts and stories, the wonders of science, I can make people to see and appreciate the beauty and the enormous contributions the science has brought to humanity. Thank you. Anyone with questions? Yes, I have some physics background, and uh, uh, I think in the quantum area of entanglement, you could really go wild with a picture of a tanglement. Okay. Uh, the second point is Kunt confuses the artist with a palette. He's saying, what is RGB? I have RYB, and I know the physics is that one is an additive process and one is a sub subtractive process of the wave uh, frequency. So maybe you can explain that. Yeah, I work in the TV industry. So RGB stands for uh, red, green, and blue. And these are the fundamental colors. And you can mix them and come up with all different types of colors. But that's an additive process. The palette guy says, I want to mix uh, to get uh, green. He uses red and yellow. If I want to get uh, uh, orange, I'm sorry, red and yellow makes orange, and yellow and blue makes green. So yellow is the middle thing, not uh, G. So it's R, Y, uh, B. Yeah, R, red, yellow, blue instead of red, G. So one is an added process, which is understandable, and also the yellow part is understandable. Okay, the RGB is the standard in the TV industry and also in the film industry, so that's what I used and that's why I used the connotation of the TV screen. This is the three colors they use in the TV screen to come up with the all different colors and you know how beautiful those colors are. Yeah, but that Thank you. Happen in the I, I, I'm not familiar with it, so I cannot uh, speak to that. But that's what I'm saying from movie industry and from the TV industry. That's what we use as the RGB standard. Thank you. Well, I'm an old curmudgeon. And um, I don't think we're going to be around much longer. We're screwing up everything. And uh, when we become extinct, the sun will still rise in the east and set in the west. Now, I appreciate that we've got a lot of geniuses who've dreamed up all these theories, the quantum theories and all this sort of thing, but these are still illusions. We still don't understand gravity, we still don't understand the, uh, uh, we don't understand light and this sort of thing, and we probably never will. We still cannot comprehend the origin of the cosmos in spite of this theory about us coming out of nothing, and uh, but as long as we're around, I agree, we may as well try to appreciate life, even though we'll probably never understand that either, along with everything else. These are a real mystery, and we will never really comprehend it all. But while we're here, I agree, we should make the best of it. Otherwise, I'm looking forward to kicking off and turning all the world's problems over to you young guys. Thank you. God has spoken. <laughs> and that's the beauty of 
knowing about science. Science never claims. They know everything. And, that, and as long as the mysteries are there, science is there trying to uncover. And we never say, the scientists never say, they know the absolute truth. It's not like God who knows the absolute truth. The scientists never claim that. For example, Newton, Newtonian theory worked fine, but then Einstein came along, and, and Newtonian theory still works within that limited uh, environment. So the science progresses as the mystery unfolds, but then as mystery unfolds, other mysteries come about. So that's the beauty of living in a very thriving and driver's universe. Thank you. I don't call that an illusion, please. It's a, it's a reality, and we try to uncover those, uh, what's behind those. That's why I'm saying about what, what is color. Let's find out. It's the mystery we want to find out. And that keeps life very interesting. It's a form of entertainment. Are there any other questions? All right, let's give Ahmed a big hand then. Thank you.